So I'm about to enter into my own somatic unwinding practice. And it's a very quiet, silent, internal practice, but I will speak when I feel there's something that I need to kind of share so that you're aware that even though it looks like there's not a lot going on, um, there's a lot going on on the inside. So I'll just share as I feel the need. Otherwise, see if you can connect in the field, through the field, um, and feel what's happening. my hint here to release that pressure and I guess to start to settle the physical body down to still the physical body and to allow myself to go through that process of detaching the energy of just having to do through the physical or keeping busy, that avoidance of being still, so all of that and allowing my awareness to yes scan what I notice sensation wise through my physical body but as well as feeling those sensations or being aware of those sensations in the body, in different places inside the body, we then want to, what I'm then, um, what's happening is my awareness of what the body is and the boundaries of the body expands. So I start to sense both inside this inside the body, inside the cells, through the energy in my body, but also out around into my field around the body. At the same time, for example, what I'm feeling in my right or both hands right now is a subtle pulsation of energy. I'm not gripping anywhere. Part of the process of dropping in is to let go of or to acknowledge and just feel gently into any places that I am gripping because they can be doorways in for the somatic unwinding process. And in this case, what I'm starting to notice is my right hand, I'm very aware of a pulsation of energy down my arms into the palms of my hand, but I'm also very aware of where my fingers are bending, there's like an extension. I feel like a pull in the actual energy field, like a puppet string kind of tugging on my fingers in a way. And because that's the place that's speaking loudest to me down in the, my right hand and in the fingers and the palms, then that's where I'll kind of lean into a little and invite the somatic unwinding practice to begin at that point because that's what I'm most aware of at the moment, even though there are other sensations in my being. Other kind of, I, I kind of say them as tugs, like energetic puppet strings or pulls, or like I'm pulling a knot when I'm tying a, a string or a ribbon, like it pulls you in. Okay, so that's kind of one explanation of how to enter into this. So. I'm just going to be with this for a bit and we'll see what happens and I'll follow the unfolding as the unwinding occurs. So now I feel that all through my right side, deep inside my body,
And although my movement feels quite big at the moment, it doesn't always have to be. A moment ago, before I turned the camera on, it was just in my fingers and just in my lower arm. But I think I initiated the process and now my being is starting to follow. It knows that I'm giving the space and the time for the process so it, more can happen. This process won't happen when it's rushed or if our being knows that it doesn't have the time to complete it and see it through. It's a matter of really honouring. There are many layers to this practice and there's the unwinding which is what is appearing at the moment and then there are moments where your being just stops you and it's almost like two ends fuse and you feel this amazing powerful still point and your being just has to stay right in that moment stay very still it's a still point magic happens in those still points you know that deep healing is taking place in those still points and it's not a matter of us creating them. Your being will stop you. Something will happen. You'll feel an energy shift. And it just says stay. When you're in those still points, you'll notice that locally where you've been kind of focused around, but also globally your whole system will respond like taking the deepest of breaths but beyond that we're working beyond the physical it affects the physical but we're in the energetic realms which is a little harder to find language for When you expand your perceptive awareness, you start to feel so many more things in your actual field. You know, I can feel a, an invisible tension pattern here in my, between my, where my right hand is and my right chest. There's energy between that space. It's not empty space. I'm in my field. And sometimes I feel it like squeakiness or just uh, kind of not smooth. There's a momentary tension point. There's a slight kind of itchiness in the field, if that makes sense. Just in that localised point. And then I guess if I asked, I could probably come up with a colour and maybe words for a texture as well. And I'm feeling that that's emanating through from my liver, which is in that area. Well, it's actually my right lung, but down a little bit lower is my liver. But it's still in the proximity of this area in my field. an old injury in my lung on the right side. But I'm feeling it in the field, not in my actual physical body. Which is interesting that I now go to the lung because down the arms and meridians are the heart, lung, large intestine, small intestine, triple heater. And that was my entry point in today. So I'll just be quiet and be with it for a little while now.
and my body's going through a lot of spontaneous pendiculation, which is like um, when we squeeze in toward tension. It's like being drawn in toward where you're feeling tension and it squeezes. It's like when you again pull that, pull the knot and it pulls everything into the center, I'm being drawn in. It's this internal squeezing and it's drawn from within. I'm not inducing it from the external. I'm following from the internal. That's the key. Spontaneous shortening and squeezing in. Leaning into the places of tension or following, being drawn in and just being there until it's ready to spontaneously release itself. So the listening and finding a strong awareness in my lower, the, the root of my neck and my throat and I know those are the areas for me. So the longer you enter into the practice, the more layers you'll go through and you'll get down to deeper, deeper holding things and areas of um, importance that will tell a story in your own journey. Manifests through the physical, but it's not physical. It's pre-language, it goes beyond thought. It's not, not about thought. When I start to think, I stop the process. And there's a dialogue that is happening within me, within this practice. And you know that it's there, but it's not words. There are stories unwinding that transcend the limitations of thought. We're reaching deeper places. That we can't get to with processing through the mind. It all happens within the soma, within the mind and the body together as one. Every cell in your body holds information. And we're releasing old stored information to come back to a place of more authenticity within the being unraveling those deep held tension patterns those layers of protection that we create we're so creative sometimes a little too much in some ways so we're unraveling that now Anywhere that the body has responded in a way that might have needed to protect you and done what it needed to do in the moment. It's like a when you're pandiculating it feels like this beautiful yawn that just keeps on going because when we do wake up and we give ourselves that yawn and stretch in the morning it's like our system through the fascia is resetting itself so that we don't go into the day with any patterns that we might have kind of held on to through the night and that amazing process of sleep so it's important to take the time to pandiculate in the morning to yawn to reset I guess we call it stretch, but it's not really stretch when we talk about the somatic world. Pendiculation is more of a, a squeeze. <laughs> and you can yawn to your heart's content through the practice, if that comes naturally. Whatever comes naturally for you, follow that. Indulge that.
Sometimes memories might come as memories are released, as um, information that might have been stored in the tissues from experiences that can arise. Some people, sometimes we know this as flashbacks, and sometimes flashbacks can really have their place in helping us fully realize that which we might not be conscious of and release it. And although flashbacks can feel really scary, especially they can sense that you're reliving a trauma, if you remember that you're safe where you are now and that you're consciously entering into this practice, you're not alone, make sure you're not alone, and that this is your, your body's way of releasing when those memories or images arise then this is a way that you're moving it through your system so you don't have to hold on to it anymore because it takes a lot of energy to push things down and we do want them to move through so we can fully move on we can learn from them we can grow we can let them go and be free again they don't have hold of us anymore Please make sure you do have support if you need it and that you're always conscious of that safe place within you, that place where you know you're safe in your body, that place where you feel contented in your body, that you know you can go to any time. Maybe it's just a place in your mind. Maybe it's a literal physical place or around a person. Whatever it is for your safety, just remember you can go to that place any time that you need to, any time it gets a bit overwhelming. So for the purpose of the video, I'm going to leave that there and I'll probably continue on my own practice. And then I will finish in Shavasana on my back after that. So, thank you for watching.